Welcome to Draw This. Draw This is a series of videos where I'll draw a random word for you and describe my process so that you, the viewer, can follow along. So today's random word is wrench. I'm going to go ahead and work in Adobe Illustrator today, and we're going to do a vector drawing of a wrench. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go to File, New. Doesn't really matter what canvas size you choose to a certain degree because this is vector art and you can scale the art up or down. But for this example, I'm going to use 1024 by 786 pixels. I'm going to use a resolution of 72 and a color mode of RGB. Now you may have some different palettes set up than I do. You can find all these palettes under the window menu if there's anything here that you don't have on your screen. Mainly we're going to want layers, pathfinder, align, and stroke, as well as the color palettes. So the kind of wrench that we're going to draw is a crescent wrench. So we'll go ahead and get started with the rectangle tool. We'll choose a stroke width of three. We'll go ahead and use a black stroke and a white fill. The stroke is the outline and the fill is what fills in the middle of the outline. So we'll go ahead and drag to draw a rectangle. This will be the handle for the wrench. We'll click and hold on this tool to get the other options and we'll select the ellipse tool. We'll go ahead and put in an ellipse. Now we'll click back on this ellipse tool and go back to the rectangle tool. We'll go ahead and draw another rectangle here. We want to round off one of the sides of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a point. You want to select the pen tool and underneath the pen tool is the add anchor point. We'll add an anchor point there on the right side. To make sure that these anchor points are evenly spaced, we'll use the white arrow tool to drag a selection around the three points. And we will choose to distribute them on the vertical center. That spaces them out evenly. We'll click on that center point and we'll hold shift on our keyboard and use the right arrow key on our keyboard to nudge this pretty far over to the right. Then we'll use this corner point adjuster to just drag this to the left to round off the corner. And that's the kind of shape that we want. We'll go ahead and drag that shape on top of our other shape, like so. Then we want to drag a selection around all three of these shapes to select all three. And we will go to the align palette and we will make sure that they're aligned on the vertical axis. Then we want to take this shape here and we want to rotate it up at an angle like so and position it exactly where you want it. You can use the arrow keys to nudge it around. And if it's too big or too small, you can adjust it. I'm going to scale it down to right about there. Move it a little bit more. I think that looks good for the end of the wrench. So I'm going to drag a selection around just these two parts. And I'm going to go to Pathfinder and Pathfinder will let us cut out shapes or add shapes together. We're going to use minus front, and since that shape was in the front of the ellipse layer, it punched it out. So now we have a nice crescent wrench shape. Now we can duplicate that. If we select it and we hold Alt and Shift and we drag, that'll drag a copy and keep it aligned. We can rotate it and put it on the other end. We can scale it down. If you hold Shift and Alt, that's how you scale from the center. Make it smaller. And we can even distort these a little bit, stretch them out, however you want. Now if you want to realign them, just select them all, go to the Align palette, and align them on the vertical axis. So now what we want to do is we want to select all three of these, go back to the Pathfinder, and we want to unite them. That fuses them into a single shape. Now we can select that, and we can go ahead and adjust the stroke. Let's put it up to four. You may notice that when you increase the stroke, occasionally when there's corners, you get this weird little edge here. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and select your object, go to the stroke palette, and change the corner to round join, and that'll get rid of that weird sharp point there. Let's select our wrench. Let's go ahead and give it a fill color. We'll select our fill swatch here, and we'll pick a gray color. Select our wrench again, and we will go to the effect menu. 3D, Extrude and Bevel. We'll want to turn on the Preview option, which is down here at the bottom of the palette in the left-hand corner, and that will give us a nice 3D effect for our wrench. You can go ahead and adjust this box if you want to adjust the 3D view. We will go with something like that. And if you're not seeing these extra options here, you want to click on More Options. We'll want to change the surface to Diffuse Shading, and we'll go to OK. So now we have a nice three-dimensional wrench. Now, if we want to be able to edit these colors a little bit, what we're going to have to do is select the wrench, go to Object, and then Expand Appearance, and then you can double-click 
on this wrench to open it up and get in here and change these to different colors. Like so. And I think that looks pretty good. We have a finished vector wrench that we can scale up and down to any size that we want and print it without worrying about losing resolution. If you like this episode of Draw This, take a quick second to share this video with your friends and click the like button. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to watch my latest videos as they're released. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday for a new episode of Draw This.